You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife, Trouble in Paradise. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I've explained to you the dynamic between narcissist and victim. It's no different when it comes to Harry's wife and Harry. And this has prompted page six to report by Bernie Zillow and Sarah Nathan. Rumours swirl there's trouble in paradise for Prince Harry and Harry's wife. Rumours are swirling that Prince Harry and Harry's wife's marriage is on the rocks. Well, this is nothing new. This has been said for some time. And, of course, it's appropriate because we know that she's causing the sustained devaluation for him, which results in him finding himself on the receiving end of multiple malign manipulations with the occasional respite period also. Page 6 references the fact that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are taking time apart to heal and rebuild their bond. They're trying to figure out what hit them. Harry doesn't fit into Harry's wife's tacky Tinseltown world, a source told the outlet, which, as you've now realised, is being repeatedly quoted. It also added that he's hoping to find himself. However, an insider close to the couple, who wed in May 2018, assures page six that any speculation of a breakup is untrue. Accordingly, the PR machine is being activated for the purposes of trying to head off the possibility that there is a break, that is there a separation, and nullify that threat to control by explaining that it's not true. It's not true. It's literally made up, the insider explains. Oh, well, that's all right then. As previously reported, the renegade royal 38 is making plans to return to Africa solo for a new Netflix documentary. Now, given that it appears apparent that that is what is going to take place, they could well say, we're not separating, it's simply, I'm going elsewhere for work, Harry's wife is staying in California to pursue her work opportunities. Plenty of couples do that. One stays in one place, the other has to go elsewhere, whilst filming, whilst perhaps undertaking their work. There might be an engineer that has to go to another part of the world to help out on a big project. They might be a medic that is being flown into a particular place where help is necessary. There are lots of people who find themselves working away from home and thus being away from their loved ones. Take anybody that's in the military. They're regularly away from home, either on manoeuvres or in war zones. And therefore, the simple fact that two people are spending time apart, occasioned by their professional pursuits, does not of itself mean that there is a separation in the relationship in the sense that the relationship is parked. However, what must be remembered is that in this dynamic there is a narcissist. So ordinarily, where there is a situation that doesn't involve a narcissist, somebody could be posted overseas, they don't see their family, their spouse for a period of time. In some instances, they might be posted with them. In other instances, that can't happen. But here, there is a different dynamic. The option is that Harry's wife would go with him, and ordinarily that would happen. For instance, when he undertook a royal tour of Australia, she went there, didn't she? Why? because they were in the golden period, that she wanted, of course, to maintain control over him in a benign fashion. But then, of course, it hit devaluing behaviours. Her her conduct likely caused rows, the way that she behaved towards other people. And Harry saw this, and it started to cause the shift as they moved out of the golden period into devaluation. It might be that devaluation had already occurred by that point, and there was a respite period for part of the Australian tour, and then along came the devaluation once again. The point being is that whether it was in the golden period or a golden period that was a respite period, she went with him. That they moved to California. They were together. Now, not every couple spends every waking moment together, of course not. But it is important to recognise and understand the very fact that it exists, that because she's a narcissist, 
that where he goes elsewhere, she would either issue a preventative hoover to stop him doing it, telling him, no, you can't go. And that can happen both within the golden period. Please don't go. I'll miss you so much. I need you to stay. I don't think I'll be able to cope without you. Basically espousing the benefits of the relationship. The fact that you can't function without that individual, that you'd be depressed if they were not with you. Meaning, in the circumstances, you want them to stay with you, but you do so, the narcissist does so in a benign fashion. And then, of course, there are other instances where it's more malign. If you go, that's the end of the relationship. If you go, I can't see us being together. I can't believe that you're so selfish to go off and do this, leaving me with the children, etc., etc. Triangulation, use of guilt, belittlement, invalidation, etc., all done in a malign fashion to cause the narcissist victim to not leave. But as I explained in an earlier video, she may well sanction his trip to Africa. And whilst many people would say, well, he's just going to Africa, it's not a separation, it does pose a significant risk for them. Ordinarily, she would not let him go on his own. She'd either stop it or she'd go with him. Her narcissism doesn't see that there's any value in her going to Africa because of what her prime aim requirements are. And she simply has no patience or time for Africa, despite what she said in the past. It really doesn't provide her with anything that is useful for the prime aims that she doesn't think she can get by staying in America. And as you know, the way that the narcissism functions is that it prefers a more economic route. So if it can get what it requires by staying in the United States rather than going to Africa, that's what happens. And if that's at the expense of their relationship, so be it. He's in the sustained devaluation, so she doesn't care. It also, of course, as I've explained earlier, opens up opportunities for her to hunt down a new victim whilst he is away. But what do people state about this? The article, of course, repeats much about their troubles and woes and why it's been problematic for them that the deals have variously been lost, etc. But what do people below the line think about it? McMurph. Unfortunately for Harry, but it was obvious from the beginning that she was all about her, Harry was just a means to an end. They, meaning she, didn't expect the lots of royal funding when they wanted to step back from working royals. That would have allowed her to build her brand at her lazy pace with the royals financing her lifestyle. An accurate observation there, demonstrating her lack of accountability and sense of entitlement. McMurph continues by stating, Stepping back meant finding work. The bug deal money is likely gone. $20 million sounds like a lot, but after federal and California taxes, agents and management fees, security costs, housing costs for a $14 million house are not cheap, and the property taxes are killer. I'm not sure too much of that money is left. The Spotify money was likely reduced by half or more, but goes through the same spending cycle mentioned above. The Netflix deal is likely paid over time and by project, so they probably still have to work for the majority of that money. I'm sure Netflix has a big say in what they'll support in terms of viable projects. Suddenly, the Sussexes have a major cash flow problem on their hands. What does she do? Takes care of herself first. It speaks volumes. Bye-bye, Harry. It will hurt for quite a while, but in the end, it will be worth it. A perceptive post there by McMurph. New Day. Yep, I knew from the beginning. Harry and Harry's wife are too dissimilar. Completely different backgrounds and lifestyles. Harry's wife is a Hollywood hanger-on. Harry doesn't fit in there. I give him credit for trying, but it's just not working for him. They've been apart a lot over the past year. I suspected trouble in paradise, so here we are. I always predicted they wouldn't last, but I'm surprised it's only been five years. Again, perceptive observations... Creus, the timings are spot on. A couple of weeks ago, re I read me again's inner circle advised her to distance herself from Harry to save her career. Guess that's why GS hasn't been around, making some decisions. We've all seen this coming. Millie Love, she ruined his life for her own selfish chase for celebrity and fame. And actually, although that's what it looks like on the surface, 
It was her pursuit of the prime aims which has caused her to ruin his life. She didn't like the fact that she couldn't be in the spotlight as a royal and that she had to take a back seat to Kate. I hope this article isn't true, though. If she didn't want the fame and attention, she would not have moved to L.A. with Harry. They could have bought a nice home anywhere in America. Free citizen response, true. Also, if they really wanted privacy, they could have easily stayed in Canada, where paparazzi are not all over the place. California, it's literally paparazzi land. Can't sell me that story. H.H. replies, she was a nobody. Her name was never in the news. She saw Harry as an opportunity to marry a prince and get a name all over the news in every newspaper in the world. Her plan worked perfectly. Harry was a prince who turned into a puppet for her uh, own selfish needs. Allied with the question of her apparently posting divorce papers and seeking $80 million, the rumour that the house has already been sold and that they're going to be spending time apart, it certainly does look like that the disengagement is coming up pretty fast. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.